In this session, I'm going to talk to you about screen sharing. There's two ways that you can share your screen. You can click on this share screen button here and it will launch the share screen pane. Or you can click on this share screen button here and you can choose to share your screen or a whiteboard. Or if you have an iPhone or iPad, you can share those from here as well. We discussed these two checkboxes earlier, that these are the best for when you're sharing something like a video through the web. If you want the students on the other end to be able to hear it, you need to select share computer sound. And if you want it to be optimized for playback so it's not quite so jerky, you'll want to use optimized screen share for video clip. The first thing I'm going to talk to you about is the whiteboard. The whiteboard is a great function, especially if you're teaching remote. Now, by default, not sure why, it's shared and it's paused. So students on the far end would not see what you're drawing on the whiteboard. So you have to click resume share. And once you do that, the students will be able to see whatever you draw on the whiteboard. You can click draw and choose a drawing tool. So if you're working through a math problem and you're really good with your mouse, you can do it this way. Alternatively, if you log into an iPad or a iOS device, you can choose to annotate with the pen tool. And it will actually identify who the person is that is drawing on the whiteboard. So that's a nice feature. Remember, annotations is a feature that you have to set up for students to be able to annotate on the top of. So when you go to security, you would have to allow annotating on that shared content for those students to participate and draw. You can also share your screen and then annotate over the top of it. For example, I oftentimes get questions about things like Microsoft Word. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to try and share my screen. So I'm going to choose share screen. I'm going to choose this monitor, which is desktop two. I have three monitors attached. So you see the number two that indicates it's desktop two. And then you'll see a blue border around it. That's a double indication that you've chosen the right screen. So I'm going to choose share and then I'm going to bring up my Microsoft Word. A lot of times these buttons are really tiny and hard for people to see. So you may decide that you want to annotate on top of it and draw something like maybe a box around a button. And you can do that very easily. And then maybe even draw an arrow to indicate where that button is. So that allows you to annotate or draw over the top of it. For your students to be able to see things better. You can then either save those annotations as a PNG and see them in your finder folder or you can clear any annotations that you drew that your students draw all drawings all together. Then I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that's one way of sharing your screen and annotating. You can just share your screen in general though if you have a PowerPoint presentation. So Say I want to share this screen, but I have some notes that I want to be able to read in the background, so I don't want my students to be able to see that I'm reading through those notes. Um, so the notes may appear down here. So I can return to my Zoom meeting. Instead of sharing my entire screen, I can choose to share a portion of the screen. So I can click share a portion of my screen. A green box will show up around the portion of the screen that you're sharing. And then you can actually drag and drop that box and resize it so that the students only see a portion of it. And so now the students, all they see is what's within that green box. So if you go to the next slide and the next slide, 
all they're seeing is what's in that green box. So it allows you to see your PowerPoint notes and them to see the PowerPoint you're presenting. Alternatively, if you want to show them the whole thing, you can stop sharing your screen and you can choose to share your screen and you can share the entire desktop where you have that PowerPoint displayed. Then you'll bring your PowerPoint up in slideshow mode. And unfortunately for me, it brought up my instructor uh, notes on this display. So I'm going to swap the displays. And now I should see the PowerPoint and so should my students. So it's very easy to make that change. So now as I go through, I can go through my PowerPoint and I have a couple of options. I can annotate using the Zoom annotation tools or I can annotate using the pen that is found right within PowerPoint itself. I'm going to escape out of my PowerPoint and stop sharing my screen. Let's try that one more time. And if you annotated using PowerPoint, it'll ask you if you want to keep those ink annotations so that you can share them with your students later maybe. You can choose to keep them at this time or you can choose to discard them. Now don't forget that there is that new option where you can share your screen and instead of choosing to share your PowerPoint, you choose advanced and you can choose slides as virtual background and when you click share, you can find that PowerPoint that you want to use. Open it up, turn on your camera, and be superimposed on top of your PowerPoint as you're presenting. If, the, if you find that your video is in the wrong location, you can move it to the other side and continue presenting. Once you've concluded sharing your presentation, you can click stop sharing at the top of the screen and it'll go back to just displaying your web camera, no content.